is up everybody sorry it's been a while since i've been able to make a video it's it's just been too hectic at work and well i decided to bring y'all to my house and make a video of a backyard paint job and just to show you real quick this is a 25 foot parker he wants it seafoam green and you know i'm gonna do it in my backyard so some time back i closed in his transom it was kind of soft but he wanted to put this bracket on there and whatnot so i closed that in i also put new stringers and a new floor in it and we put two layers of 1708 on there he did all the finish work as far as grinding priming and painting it's a work boat didn't need to be pretty just needed to be sturdy but he does want the hull pretty so there's not too much work to be done to it. It's not in that bad a shape. He has worked the heck out of it and it's got some gouges and other little minor flaws on it, but that's gonna be easy enough to fix. So I just figured I'd make y'all a video and the only way I could seem to do that right now is to bring y'all home and show y'all a backyard paint job. So I'm gonna get ready and get to sanding and yeah. This contraption right here, I do not like wearing these when sanding. I prefer to have a 3M N95 dust mask. They're more comfortable, they're lighter, but because of the whole COVID-19 thing, I can no longer get those right now. And in fact, this is the last set of P100s I have. So I'm gonna make the best of it and get this job done. With that being said, I hope y'all enjoy. Here we go. This is gonna be quick, dirty, sturdy, and pretty. So let's get it Just done. Just to jump in real quick. This time I'm gonna be using Merca's Abernet sandpaper right here. This is great stuff. It's a screen type sandpaper. You can use it for wet sanding. If it clogs up, I mean, well, it's a screen. It's really easy to get unclogged and this paper lasts forever. I have 80 grit, 220, and 320. So I'm going to 80 grit the whole thing, and I'm going to load the 545 primer on there and then the 220, 320 process. So anyhow, just wanted to note that. Here we go. Everybody. day two of sanding so yesterday I got the starboard side and half of the stern sanded with 80 grit and my electric DA just isn't acting right so I brought home my air powered Dynabraid DA and that's the compressor y'all hear right now so hopefully this goes a bit smoother and a bit quicker and yeah it's just another afternoon of sanding, so I'm gonna hurry up and knock this step out, and I'll jump back in with y'all when it gets to filling before priming. So here we go, sanding time.
right, everybody. So I got home today and it was downpouring. So I went ahead and did my pre-scrub with the Scotch Brayton water hose outside while it was raining to get the boat all cleaned. And I wanted to prime it outside, but because of the weather, I have to do it inside. So this is gonna make the video in a bit tight because there's not much room in there. I have another boat upside down in there and plus a bunch of junk everywhere. So I'm gonna do the best I can to cover this. Everything has been sanded. Now I'm going to tape off and do some spot glazing where needed and then sand those areas, clean it, mask off, and get this boat primed tonight. So it's going to be a long evening, and I'm going to take you all along for the ride. So all here right, we go. So the first step, taping off. Time lapsing. Let's get it done. That water line's a bit wonky, but I'm not fixing that. It'll be okay. All right, everybody. I got it all taped off, it's ready for masking, but before masking, I'm gonna go around and spot fill everything I can see before priming. And I'm only gonna use a 3M Vinyl Lester Premium filler for this. It's gonna last, it'll be just fine, and it's gonna dry quick and allow me to sand it basically immediately afterwards so I can proceed with getting this prime tonight. So just to show you what I'm filling real quick, it's a variety of just little chips and dings, light scratches like that. You know, here's an old repair that the owner did. I'm just gonna glaze that out and sand it so that it's flush and looks good with primer. But other than that, you know, little stuff like that, that's all I'm filling. So I just wanted to show you all that real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and mix up the filler and put polka dots all over the boat. So here we go. I got everywhere filled I could find. Back to 80 grit real quick. I'm gonna hurry up and do this time lapse style, and then I'm gonna blow wipe the boat off, mask it off, solvent white, mix up the primer. Here we go. All right, everybody. Time to mask off. So I've got 24 inch pre-tape masking film and 48 inch pre-tape masking film. As I've stated before, you can pick this stuff up at Walmart. It's very important, or well, should I say it makes the job a lot easier to have this stuff when doing this type of work. So I'm gonna go ahead and mask it off. Time lapse, get back to y'all soon. All right. All right, everybody, time to solvent white. As always, denatured alcohol. So I'm gonna hurry up and get this done. It's getting late, it's almost 11 o'clock. And well, yeah, so time lapse, here we go. All right, everybody, she's solvent cleaned and ready, so now it's time to prime. As always, I got my good old 3M AccuSpray. I'm using the 2.0 cap for the priming. I 
got white 545 base converter T000 reducer. This is a one to one mix ratio. You allow it to induct for 15 minutes and then you add up to, well, it depends, anywhere from 15 to 25 percent reducer. And as always, the good old respirator. So I'm going to do all of this in time lapse. It's getting late and I want to get this done. So, yeah, with that being said, let's get the primer flying. All right. show y'all the compressor setup I'm using for this. They're small. I got my two horsepower 29 gallon little central pneumatic Harbor Freight compressor and then I have this Husky 33 gallon tank. Now this compressor doesn't work. I just use it as a backup tank and what you do is you donkey these two together and what I mean by that is I have this little hose and I'll hook it into this compressor and run this other end over to here and it'll fill up this backup tank and it gives me continuous air i've painted multiple 25 foot boats with this setup right here it works i don't know if i would try to paint something over 25 foot but i do know that this works for a 25 footer and of course there's my my water separator setup you need to have one of these with these smaller compressors because well, they do build up water quickly, so you need to have one of those so that you don't contaminate your primer or your paint products. Just wanted to show you all that real quick. So all right, the primer is inducting. I wanted to show you the compressor setup that I use here at home in my own garage. So all I have is a two horsepower, 29 gallon central pneumatic. It's a Harbor Freight compressor. And then I have a 33 gallon husky that does not work i just use this as a backup tank and what you do is you donkey these two together and what i mean by that is you have this little hose here i'll hook it into the outlet here and run the other end over to this outlet and then this is my my air hose that runs to my gun so <clears throat> this tank will build that tank up and this one and when it stops running both are full and it gives you continuous air. I've painted multiple 25 foot boats with this exact setup and it works just fine. I wouldn't go painting anything larger than 25 foot because well, it might not be big enough. So when using these tanks, you wanna have a water separator. Really, you wanna have one of these with any compressor you use, but particularly with the smaller ones because well, they build up moisture and water quick in the bottom of them. and it's just, you need to have one of these so you don't contaminate your primer or your paint job. And yeah, just figured I'd note that real quick. All right, everybody, here we go. I'm gonna do all three of these coats time lapse. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna start now. All right. All right, y'all, that's a wrap, three coats and done. Uh, you know, I know in the beginning up until now, I haven't really covered much or done much explaining on the prep and the products that I use and all of that. Well, it's just because I'm doing this project after work and well, I'm just trying to get it done. But that's three coats done, it's 1 a.m. I gotta get up and go to work tomorrow and then I'll just jump right back on this tomorrow afternoon after work. So, yeah, you know, it is what it is. But anyhow, I'll take you for a quick walk around real quick. You know, 
I don't like using white primer. I like gray primer. It, it allows you to see everything a lot better. Flaws when you're sanding, it acts as its own guide coat. I know I've mentioned that in the past. I've even showed y'all what I was talking about in previous videos with that. But anyhow, she's white. And now it's time to prep for seafoam green. This is going to be a pretty work boat when it's done. And I believe I, I'd stated this in the past, well, not in the past, but when I started this episode, that this is a buddy of mine's boat. He's a crabber. He oysters. He does all that good stuff. And so we're not looking for perfect. We're just looking for sturdy and pretty and a job that's going to last. And, well, this job's going to last. So anyhow, ugh, you got to love it. But when I get into the prepping for the seafoam green, I'll be a lot more informative with the prep and the materials I'm using. And I'm also going to show y'all how I set up the 3M Active Spray. And yeah, that's that, you know, I don't know. It's one o'clock in the morning. I'm tired. So with that being said, up until this point, I know I haven't shared much information, but all you got to do is backtrack into previous videos and you'll kind of get the gist of what's going on. With that being said, I'll see you all tomorrow. All right.